So welcome back everyone. This is lesson two of creating a game from scratch. So in the last lesson, we looked at how we could create some backdrops. So we created five backdrops. We created a title screen, a game over screen, a times up screen, and then we put some levels in. So we have a level one and level two mazes. What we're gonna do in this lesson, we're gonna actually put some characters into these mazes. So we're gonna start off in our level one maze. So let's go to scripts and then let's start adding characters. So I'm gonna click on this button here, choose sprite from library. So let's click on that. And then we are given all of these different sprites. Now you can choose anything that you like here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the scratch cat. So I'm gonna go into animals and here is the scratch cat. So I'm gonna insert that one now. The reason I'm using the scratch cat is because I know the scratch cat has got some animations in which case the cat can start walking. So let's click on my cat and I'm gonna move the cat into this corner because what I want is this to be kind of a logo, okay? We're gonna put another character in here. So I'm gonna go down to the cat here. I'm gonna right click, let's click on info and I'm gonna change the name of the cat. This is gonna be logo cat. So while we're on this, let's have a look at the details that we've got here. So it's saying that the X and Y axis are these here. So these is exactly the, the X direction and the Y direction of where the cat is located. Now, from a teaching point of view, this is a really good opportunity to start teaching the kids about coordinates. Whenever you play something within Scratch, it's given an X and Y coordinate, whether that's a, a negative value or a, a positive value. Now, if you can imagine this grid in two, this is the minus X and plus Y axis. Here's the plus Y and plus X axis. Here is the minus Y and plus X. And here's the minus Y and minus X. And you can see those as I move my cursor around here, you can see under here is the coordinates that that's gonna happen. All right, so you can actually see these coordinates all the time. Now this is a really good teaching moment for the children in a mathematical context. Other things you might want to look at here is the direction. So we can move this round, and as we move this round, we can see the angle that the, the cat is going to be placed at. Now, at 90 degrees, it's facing the right. But if I wanted that cat to face a different direction, I could move that round as well. And again, this is another teaching opportunity. When we're creating these games in Scratch, angles are used a lot. So we, the children need to start understanding this concept of degrees. So the rotation style, we can click on the rotation style whether we are gonna flip. So if I click on this button here and now go 90 degrees, it's gonna turn in the opposite direction. So that's quite important too. Okay, so let's turn that back. So there's some information there, many teaching points, particularly with the coordinates and the angle. Okay, so now let's look at the costumes of this character. So let's go to costumes. And we have two different costumes here, cat 1A and cat 1B. Now we can change these if we want to, but I'm just gonna leave them as they are. So that's quite important. Now you could, if you wanted to, add more costumes. So I could copy this and just move things around a bit, but I'm just gonna leave them as they are because I just want two costumes for this particular cat. So let's go back to the script now and let's make this character move. So what we want to do is when level one appears, we want our character to switch between each costume. So let's go to events. And then we can say when the backdrop switches to level one, we want our character, which is the logo cat, to switch to its next costume. So we need to go to looks. And then what we want to do is we want the cat to go to the next costume. So let's switch it to the next costume. Okay, so when we play this, if we watch the cat, there we go, it switched to the next costume, but that's not good enough. We need it to loop so it keeps on going. So what we need to do is go to control and we're gonna say forever repeat next costume. Okay, so now when we play this, let's press the space bar and there we've got the repeating going on. But as you can see, it's a bit fast. He looks like he's running for the 100 meter sprint here. So we want to delay it a little bit. So we can just take our weight and we're gonna put a weight in there and then let's change this to 0.1 seconds, okay? Now you can see here, now it's changed. So our cat is moving. We could change that further if we want, make it slower, 0.2 seconds. 
0.5 seconds. Okay, so depending on what we want to do, I think 0.2 seconds is good there. So now our cat is looking like it's moving. All right, so that's quite important because we're gonna be using that when we start putting our character into the maze. Okay, so let's try out our game. So when we press the flag, ah, so we have a problem. When the game starts, we want that cat to not appear. We want it to be hidden. So we need to add some more code in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to events. When the flag is pressed, we want to hide the cat. Okay, so let's hide it. Now let's press play. And now the cat has gone. But there's a problem still. The cat has disappeared when we press the space bar. And if we go back down to our information of the cat, you'll see it's not showing. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that when the space bar is pressed, that the cat appears again. So what we can do is we can take the show button and then stick that just under when the backdrop switches to level one. So let's play that again. The cat has disappeared. When we press the space bar, the cat has appeared. Okay, so that's the beginnings of how Scratch is actually gonna work with these characters. Now, for the time being, what we don't want is that cat to be moving. I prefer that to be a static cat. So I just wanted to show you this process to give you an idea of how we can start getting this cat moving. But I also wanted to show you how you can now delete some of this code. Now, I don't want the cat moving anymore, so I can take this code and then I can just dump it here and now it's gone. And if I stop the program and play it again, press the space bar and there is our cat, okay? That's giving you an idea of how we can start movement of the cat. Now what we want to do is make sure that that cat is actually appearing in our maze. So here's the starting point and here's the end point. So let's put the cat into the maze. So the first thing we need to do is actually duplicate this logo. So I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna duplicate this. So now we have a duplicate cat. Now, if I click on it, the same code appears. So we've got logo cat, first one, and then a second logo cat. So let's click in here and let's change this. So this is level one cat. So we're gonna keep the name, all right? But as you can see, the cat is just a bit too big. So remember our code is the same. So when we play it, both cats are gonna disappear. All right, so both cats have gone and both cats appear when we press the space bar. So let's now click on the cat and what I want to do is I want to change the size of this cat. So at the top here, we've got some buttons. Okay, so I'm gonna look at this button here which says shrink. So I'm gonna click this one and now what I can do is I can shrink my cat by clicking on it several times. Now I want to make it big enough to actually fit in here. So once I've clicked on that, I can then move it and let's just check, all right, so the cat is going to fit in between there. It's going to fit in the, between there. So that's maybe a good size. I might, I could if I wanted to, maybe just shrink it a little bit more to give it more space, all right? Or I could just make the game a little bit more difficult by adding it and, and making it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna start the cat here. What I do want to do now is I want to move the cat. So that information that we had earlier, we can put in again. So let's control and let's repeat forever. And let's go to looks and then switch to the next costume. And let's go back to control and go in wait. And then let's change this to 0 0.2 seconds. So now let's have a look of what happens when we play our game. Click on it, press space, and there is our cat moving. But nothing is happening at the moment. All right, we need our cat to start moving. So in order to do that, we need to go back to our events. Now, we could start adding things to this event here, but I wanna just make this a little bit easier. So I'm gonna just take in another one of these. So when our backdrop switches to level one, we want our character to start in this position. So in order to do that, we need to go back to motion. And then we say, we come down to go to X and Y coordinates. Now it's taken the 42 and the 162 here from where the cat exists right now. If I move that cat around, you can see that the X and Y coordinates have changed. We want it to appear here. We want it to appear here every time we play the game. So what we need to do is drag this 
under here. So when we switch to level one, the cat will go to X coordinate 42 and Y164. The next thing we need to do is go to control. We want to do another repeat forever loop. So let's add the repeat forever loop. Now we have to think about what we're actually doing here. This is when we start thinking about logic and conditions. We need to say, if this does this, then do this. Otherwise, do something else. So that's what we're gonna do here. We have our control conditions just along here. So we're gonna say, if the up arrow is pressed, then go up. If the down arrow is pressed, then go down. If the right arrow is pressed, then go right. If the left arrow is pressed, then go left. So there are the conditions that we want to apply to this code. So let's take the statement and put it inside our forever. Now we want to say if, and there's a gap here for something to happen. So if the up arrow is pressed. Now the commands that you're gonna find for this are within the sensing area. So we need to click on sensing. So now what we want to say is if the key is pressed, so let's drag that in there. If the up arrow is pressed, then what do we want to do? Well, in terms of the coordinates, we want when we go up, we are changing the Y axis. So we want Y to change a certain amount of keys. So let's go to motion here. We want, we want to change Y by, now we want to change Y by a positive number because we're going up and let's say five. Now the greater the number here, the quicker the cat will go. So let's just add an extra one in here. Let's just add the other one. So we're gonna to go to control. We're gonna say if, we're gonna add the other if there. We're gonna go back to sensing. If the down arrow is pressed, we want to change, so back to motion, we want to change the Y axis by minus five, because we're going downwards, okay? So let's run this and see what happens when we press the up and down arrows. Press the space bar, down arrow, up arrow, and you can see there the speed. Now if I press right and left, you can't see me doing this, but I'm pressing left and right now, nothing is actually happening because we have not coded left and right. But notice the cat is going through the walls. So we need to sort that out later as well. Okay, so let's go back, let's stop the game and let's add left and right. So let's go back to control. We'll add another if statement in here. We'll go back to sensing. If the right arrow is pressed, then back to motion change the x-axis and we want to go and the right is positive for the x-axis and then we do one more control if the left arrow is pressed we then want to go minus x change the x-axis to minus five so let's play the game now and see what happens. Press the space bar, and there we have our cat is going around. Now if I press the left arrow and the up arrow at the same time, you can see here it goes diagonally, which is quite nice. Okay, so let's stop. And if we play this again, we should find that the cat will go straight back to the original position. So let's do that. There it has, it's gone straight back to the original position. The final thing we're gonna do in this lesson is to now make sure that the cat does not go through the walls. So let's think about carefully what we need to do here. When our cat moves, we want it to stop when it hits one of these walls. So what do all of these walls have in common? Well, the one thing they have in common is the color. So what we want to do is when the cat hits that color, we want the cat to stop. So that's the kind of logic that we're looking at here. So let's go and see if we can find something within our commands here within Scratch that allows us to do that. So we're gonna to go to sensing. So let's have a look. We've got here, touching a color. Is the object touching a color? In this case, it's pink, but we actually want black. So there is an item here that will allow us to do this. 
So we need to have another if statement, if the object is touching a color. So let's go back to control and let's drag another if statement. So let's drag it under the first if statement. Now what that's done is gone and put all of our if statements inside it. Now we don't want that, so we can quite easily just drag these out. Okay, so let's drag those out here. Okay, so now we've got our if statement. So now we can go back to sensing and we can say if the color is touching, so let's put that in. If it's touching now, let's click on the color and then go and choose the color here. And you can see as I drag it over the color, the color changes within my code. So let's click on that. We want when the object is touching the black. Now, what do we want it to do? Now we want it to stop. But in this case, what we really want to do is we want it to do the opposite of what it's doing when we press the up arrow. So let's go back to motion and then change the Y axis here to minus five. So minus five here. Okay, so when it's touching the, the black, the Y axis changes to minus five. Let's do the same again for the others. So we go back to control, we take another if statement, we're gonna put that under this arrow here, it's added those in, so let's just drag those out. Go back to sensing, if the color is again black, so let's click on the color, choose black here, there we go, and then we go back to our motion and we change our Y axis, this time to plus five. And then we gotta do the same for left and right. So I'm gonna do this very quickly. Okay, so there's our code. So let's now try it. So we're gonna click on our flag, press the space bar, and let's see what happens. Okay, so it's not going through. We can go through the maze, and every time it hits the black, it stops. And what it's actually doing is reversing. If you can see there, it hits it, and it's doing the minus coordinates. Okay, so we go down to here. Now, one problem has arisen. You may have seen there, the cat has actually been able to travel through the walls. Now the reason that is, is because around our cat here, you can see there's a black outline. Now the way we get around this is by changing the color of our maze to a different color. So we're gonna do that now. So we're gonna go into our backdrops and let's click on our backdrop. Let's stop our maze first and click on our backdrop. Now the easiest way to do this is actually convert it back to a bitmap and then click on our fill color make sure that we've got the right color here so we can change these colors. So I'm gonna change it to a blue. And then what we can do is just click on the maze here and then just change the color and there we go. All right, so that's now saved. And now what we can do is we can go back to our scripts, click on level one cat, and then just change the black here to the blue here. Okay, so let's play the game again, see what happens. Okay, so our cat is not going through the walls anymore. All right, because we've got a blue maze there. There we go, and it's traveling around the maze. So that is everything for this particular lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna look at how we can add the cat to a second level. We're gonna add a scoreboard, and then add some rewards so we can add scores to the game. See you then.